Hello everybody, this is King Alfie, and welcome back to another Replay Mod tutorial, the series where I teach you how to use Replay bit by bit. In this series, each video is roughly 5-10 to 10 minutes long, and it covers one specific mechanic or tip for the Replay Mod. And today's topic is going to be understanding position keyframes and time keyframes. And just quickly before we get into things, if this video or this series has helped you out in any way, shape, or form, please make sure to let me know by hitting that like button and clicking the subscribe button down below. It only takes a few seconds and it helps my channel out more than you may know. Also, check out my hardcore series, link in the description below. But with that out of the way, let's get on with today's video. Position and time keyframes are the building blocks of your replay mod. You literally can't make a replay without them. They're what tell your video where your camera should be and when it should be there. Now, let's break this video down into two parts, and we're going to start with position keyframes. The position keyframe button is found right here beside the save button, and by clicking that, it'll drop a position keyframe exactly where your yellow marker is on your replay timeline. You can see your position keyframes on the map when you're zooming around, and you can jump to them at any point by right-clicking your position keyframe on the timeline. Position keyframes are always dropped where your camera is currently looking, so if I drop another one right here and zoom away a little bit, when I right click it, I'll zoom back to that location that I was just at. Also, you can have as many position keyframes as you would like in your timeline, but you do have to have at least two or your video will not render when you try and save it. Position keyframes use six different numbers to determine where the camera is, so they use the Minecraft XYZ axis just like you would find on your F3 menu usually. They use the pitch, which is the up and down angle of the camera, and they use the yaw. I may be uh, pronouncing that wrong, but that's essentially the left and right angle of the camera. They also use rotation, but that is a topic we'll touch on another day. To access all of these, let's say I wanted to do that for my first location right here, I would simply double click that position keyframe, and it would pull up all of these numbers that I just mentioned, and I can edit these as needed. So if I just want to round these off, I can. These metrics can be very useful if you just want to alter something by a little bit. So if I wanted to change the position of this by just a little bit on the y-axis, move it up a little bit, let's say to 73, save that, and then I click on this again, and it'll bring me up just a little bit. Now, I've gone ahead and put the keyframes in some more sensible spots knowing where this time lapse actually goes, and I would suggest playing around with your position keyframes as much as you can trying to get those perfect angles for your replay. But if I try to render this, nothing is going to happen, and that's because we haven't done part two, which is playing with the time keyframes. Essentially right now, our camera path knows where to go, but it doesn't know how much time is between point A and point B and point B and point C, and that's where the time keyframes come in. So that's this button right here beside the position keyframes, and that is essentially going to tell our timeline where it needs to be based off of our top timeline. So what I mean by that is our top timeline goes from 0 minutes, in this case, to 4 minutes and 45 seconds. So how much time do we want to pass in these 5 seconds here? And how much time do we want to pass in these 5 seconds here? In my case, I know that I want this full timeline to run in the course of these 10 seconds here on my replay timeline. So what I would end up doing is at the beginning of the timeline here where my yellow marker is right here, or I could move it back to 0 if I wanted, I want to drop my first time keyframe. Now that's not enough, because right now we only have a starting point. We also need an ending point right here. So, at that point, you could let this replay run, and you could speed it up a little bit so you could see where you want it to stop. In my case, I know that I want it to go straight to the end here, so I can actually do a little bit of a jump here, and just let it run to the very end, and then drop my second keyframe where I want it. So in my case, I want to drop it right there. And also, I did not mention this with the position keyframes, but you can do this with both the position keyframes and the time keyframes. If you click and drag, you can move it around on your timeline. So I'm going to line it up right here with my position keyframe. That way, as soon as this position is hit, my replay ends. So what I have marked down right now is between the beginning and the end of this replay, I want the full 4 minutes and 45 seconds to pass by. And I don't need to have a time keyframe underneath each position keyframe. But if I did want to, what I could do is I could jump to the middle of this video here, which would be about 2 minutes and, say, 22 seconds. And I could drop another time keyframe underneath that keyframe if I wanted. You can have as many of the time keyframes as you'd like, but you only need two. Another important note on the time keyframes is the time does not have to go directly to the end of your video. You could have it just go partway through your video. 
So I could have the 10 seconds here only go from the beginning to the middle of the video if I'd like. And you can do a bunch of different things with this. You could set different angles if you'd like, or you can make several different files. You can do whatever you'd like with this knowledge. But let's make it so that it goes straight to the end of the video again. And by the way, Control Z does work with this program, so if you want to undo a change that you made, then just do Control Z like you usually would in any sort of document. And now if we play back the video, it's actually going to go through the full timeline of our replay, and we're going to see the full time lapse that I have here. And as with the position keyframes, you can also double click the time keyframes to manually alter these numbers if you'd like. And also like the position keyframes, you can right click on a time keyframe and it'll jump to that point in the video. But just that time, not necessarily that position, you still gotta click the position keyframe if you want to go to that position. So those are the basics of position keyframes and time keyframes. Once you're completely happy with those, just hit the save button and render your video. And here's the final product of the replay that we made together. After this I'm going to have another one play that I made on my own. And it uses a few more position keyframes and time keyframes. So what I would suggest is make a test file and just play around with the time keyframes and the position keyframes as much as you can until you fully understand how to use them. Because they truly are your most useful tools when it comes to replay mod. And if you don't know how to use those, you're going to have a rough time. But that is going to do it for this video. I hope this helped you guys out a bunch. And if I did forget anything about position keyframes or time keyframes, please feel free to throw them down in the comments below. I do forget things from time to time, and we do have a very helpful community in the comments. So make sure to share your knowledge if I forgot anything. And like I said before, if this video did help you, make sure to drop a like on it and subscribe to the channel as it does help me out more than you know. But I'm going to sign off for now. Hope you guys tune in for the next episode, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye!